and I adapted my teaching styles, not just to suit him, but to suit the whole of the group. And uh, from there, it seems to have been a pivotal mo moment, really. And then it went quiet, and I said, what's going on in maths? And Joe said, it's eight in maths now, he plays music. So I said, oh, you know, that's, oh, that's quite interesting, because Joe works better with music. We made pizzas, symmetrical pizzas that we cut into fractions. Quite a lot of the time, we're looking for data for data handling. Well, why not get primary data? What I've become aware of is to try and give it some form of meaningful context for, for, for Joe and the other children in the classroom. Well, once we were, he let us run around the field and we had a stopwatch each and we were like, time in each what's wrong. But then we thought that was dead good, but then we got back into the class and we were doing work on, on that, but that was dead good. Looking at things that they can get involved with and that they're going to remember and relate to so I can relate to it into the classroom. We get to do the work, but we're still learning everything. It works for Joe. You know, it burns off his energy. Joe is a hands-on learner. It works far, far better for him. But it also means that he's not disrupting the rest of the class quite the same. Ben is eight years old with autism and lots of his own other little added bits and bobs. He has an uneven profile, as children with autism do, so he's good at maths. He's absolutely amazing on the computer, the PlayStation and other things. He has learning difficulties, so he um, developmentally is a lot below his age. Like, the websites are really right, but there's some carry games on some websites that I don't go on. He couldn't walk when he was four, couldn't speak. Blatantly obvious he had special needs, it wasn't a case of working out what was wrong. He could have had a flag on his head saying autism at one time, but I was determined mm. that with him, mm. he wasn't he wasn't going to, you know, have the same kind biscuits. of difficult, <laughs> the same kind of difficulties that the others had. I kind of negotiated a deal where I was going to flexi-school him. So it's written in part four of his statement that he's part shared, so I teach him at home a couple of days a week. I don't go to calls on Fridays. What do you do on Friday then? I do her medication. As a parent, you spend all of your time yes, when you've got children, yes. particularly children with a hidden disability, um, trying to pick out the what I call autistically friendly teachers. The school that he's going to, I can't fault him anyway, it's an excellent school. The head teacher was receptive. Ben is on roll at Woodlands Special School. They have developed a flexible education plan with Jackie, which features inclusion at mainstream school St John Vianney. Ben came to us initially into our early years class, and uh, when he started with us, it was very much getting Ben into school, getting him used to the new routines, all the sort of new things that are involved in, in, in school life. So building up his confidence. But something I don't like about Wuggins all of it is too easy for me, and I really like harder things to do. When we felt he was ready for some mainstream, inclusive experience, he started coming through to St John Vianney's. OK, we're ready to get on the bus. Now we've got to the stage where he actually spends the majority of his time in school, his school time at St John Vianney's. Certain children taken out from Woodlands and over to the resource base. And he used to talk about liking his talking kids, and he loves playing with his talking kids because some of the, you know, a lot of the children in his class at the time they do now, but didn't speak. Something I like about St John's, what you don't do at Wuggers, what like your friends know what I really mean, but at Wuggers they don't. One of the main aims for Ben when he's here at St John Vianney's is for him to have the opportunity to mix with peers of his own age and the opportunity to gain good role models of speech and language and behaviour to give him the confidence to work in large group situations. That's fantastic writing and you've remembered finger spaces. OK, Ben, can you have a look for page 52? Today's lesson there. is to join in if with the talk. oral part of the lesson where it's the whole group working together um, and to see if he can 
on his own initiative, answer questions, put his hand up and just take part with, the, with his peers in the class. Okay, if it was ten pounds and you only took five pounds, Ben, yeah. what would happen? You wouldn't be able to go. Oh, no. You'd drive all that way and you wouldn't get in, would you? Uh, well, we know already, totally. Uh, well, we know already. So One of the main targets was for Ben out. to be independent, for Ben not to wait for me to give him a second instruction and to listen to okay. Mrs Poole. I don't know what to think. I don't know what to do. OK, so you want to have a think about it. Right. If he okay. got stuck on a particular question, for him to look to his peers for help. Ben would be very hesitant at the beginning of the year, putting pencil to paper, just giving him the confidence to do it, to manage things for himself. And in this way, one of the main targets for Ben is giving him life skills. Ben, do you understand where to put that one now? Can you show me that shape on your page? Yeah, I do numbers all the time and lessons I like, like about shapes. You have to know your names. Actually, 3D shapes, they are hard. You have to write in what, what your shapes are called. They love it when Ben comes in. They will ask, can I sit next to Ben at lunchtime? Can I come into the resource space and play with Ben? They really accept him as one of their class members. <laughs> when Ben first came here, he would much rather have playtimes here in the resource space and I would invite a few children to come in and he would much prefer indoor play and he didn't really seem to understand outside play. There were too many children, a big playground and he would always ask where is the child he wanted to play, he couldn't spot them on the playground. But now we have Ben saying that could he have longer outside and when the bell goes, he tells me off sometimes because he said that was a very short playtime because he was just getting into a game of Star Wars. And he is beginning to go out and approach children and ask them, can we play a game, rather than waiting for me to go and initiate play with him or to other children to come up to him. We're playing Star Wars. It's dead good. It's a bit like being on holiday at the moment, it's perfect. He loves it, he's happy with everything. And the school are always happy to adapt and the teachers are great with him. The only difficulty we always have is when any changes happen because Ben is appalling with changes, he hates them. Right, OK, uh, where are you going now? That was explained to me at the beginning of the year that Ben will need all these structures. I think this does work well for Ben. However, there are times where there is a sudden change and he copes extremely well with those changes. Quite often, he doesn't react at school. You know, he's very, very quiet. And then he comes in and punches me and, you know, I end up with a black eye. It's me that suffers an awful lot of the change. You know, they fall back when they change anything. But that's his education in a nutshell, really. For teachers to build children's self-esteem with any kind of difference is so important. For example, Ben takes the register to the secretary, so that gives him a sense of importance that he can walk down a corridor on his own and he's safe. He's got his own special little job. School is just amazing. Different social situations, different expressions, and different things to distract you. Um, it's like you'd be having a conversation with someone, trying to work out what's being said and what, you know, what expression's being said. But meanwhile, just to make it a little more difficult, then um, you have bells ringing in the background, you have people running around beside you, um, you have to think about what lessons you're going to and like what you're doing next, it just, all makes it so confusing. Children with autism or on the autistic spectrum are visual learners in the main, so work a lot better with pictures if they're younger children at schedules. But if schedules were made, put at the door and said, have you got your, written your homework down? Have you picked up your bag? No, do you know where your next lesson is? Then it would benefit all of the children. I'm a more auditory learner but my brother is a very visual learner because all people are so different and each has their own like 
different subjects and each has their own things that they're good at, then it depends completely on the person and what they find interesting and what they find they can do. There is a lot of positives. Ben is autistic, but he's the most honest kid you could ever come to find at all. And he's the nicest kid as well. My best thing I really wanted to do is be a footballer. Because I just really like football. Joe is ADHD, but um, he has the best imagination of any kid around that I know. And I've got a pet fish, which my mum tried to drown. And he says he hasn't got an imagination. I find writing easy, which I suppose would be a skill that would help me in later age. So far, Luke has written two books, a guide for other young people with Asperger syndrome and another about the benefits of a gluten and casein-free diet for people on the autistic spectrum. We are not allowed bread, so I have to have anything called cum cakes. Gluten is the protein in wheat, barley, rye and malt. Casein is the protein in dairy produce. Children on the autistic spectrum, they don't process these proteins in the same way and they convert them to peptides, gluteomorphine and caseomorphine. It has the effect of heroin. It's very much like morphine. With Benny, it used to make him giggle hysterically. He would flick his fingers around and Luke gets quite aggressive when he's off the diet when they've had any of the things that they are intolerant to, they crave it, just like an addict would. Go on. You know, in math, they made pizza, Joe ate the pizza. Play-Doh is made with wheat. Paints have flour in, glue has flour in. There's so many things, so you have to provide it all. You can't go out to restaurants or on school trips, or have ice creams or anything, but... It, I mean, it's in Joe's statement, but it still gets missed. My advice to, to someone who, who was is, who is expecting a child with complex difficulties is, is, is to really involve the parents as much as they possibly can, as early as they possibly can. But don't do that as a paper model. Don't do that as a piece of writing down, well, now we've got these targets, this is where we move from here. You really have to be prepared to apply those situations and, and also make your staff aware of what's going on. The successes that we may or may not have had with Joe, and I think we probably are having quite a lot of success with Joe, uh, are largely due to, to Jackie's quite positive influence and support, even at the time she you know, may have had frustrations and, and been concerned. We've never ever felt that she isn't supporting us and with us and isn't trying to work with us towards solutions. I'm well aware of who Joe is and, you know, I would hate to teach him. I feel quite sorry for teachers. I'd hate to have him in a class. <laughs> you know, because to try and do one job while they've got him bounding around squeaking must be really difficult. You gave me time to look back, didn't you? But, but with other people, they don't give me time. They just never go at me straight away. So I'm like, I'm looking away and they go, do, do, concentrate. So I go, mm, uh -uh. But with you, you are just like looking and then... I get a chance to look back, but I'm only having a look, see what's happening, whatever. I'm like a cat, really, yeah, I like moving. <laughs> say yes isn't something different. It isn't something apart from the person. Say it's not like an illness you could have. It's not like a cold or anything, it's just part of my personality. <laughs> <laughs>